In this walkthrough video, we're going to take a look at how you can streamline and automate your request for NDA approval workflow using Nintex Workflow Cloud. Requests for non-disclosure agreements are one of the most common workflows in business. And if you'd like to check out the easy to use template in the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery, go ahead and go to gallery.nintex.com, navigate to Workflows, Nintex Workflow Cloud, and then look for our mutual non-disclosure MNDA request workflow. While you can import this workflow directly from the Nintex Process Accelerator Gallery into your Nintex Workflow Cloud tenant, Today, we're gonna to go ahead and look at how you can make this workflow from scratch. The first step in automating this process is actually going to be designing our form. To do this, we'll go ahead and select our start event and then select form. And here in our configuration panel, we're actually gonna update this to give access to anyone with the form URL. This way, they do not need to be an authenticated user within our NWC tenant to access the form and submit the request. Then we'll go ahead and select design form and this will open the Nintex Workflow Cloud Forms Designer. The first control that we're gonna go ahead and add to our form is a label that we'll use to house our title. Because the label control allows for rich text, we can then go ahead and change our font format from a normal into a heading. Let's go ahead and try this one. Uh, that's a little bit too big. Let's go ahead and see if we can try one that's a little bit smaller. Okay, I think that looks a lot better. Next, what we're going to do is we'll actually drag on two different group controls. The group control allows you to nest other form controls within them to make more logical grouping of controls within your form designer. This first group will house a bunch of controls related to our contact information of the user that is submitting this request. We'll go ahead and we'll update the group name, and then we'll go ahead and set this show header to yes and provide a header for the group. The second group of controls is going to be all about the agreement information. So let's go ahead and update our group name and header. Within our contact information, we want to be able to provide a first name, last name, and email. Our first name and last name will be done using the text short controls. And then there is a dedicated email control for capturing email addresses. We also want to capture the company name who's submitting this request. So we'll use a text short for that as well. Then we'll go ahead and go through and rename our controls so they have more logical titles. And you'll notice that as the control titles are updated, the names will automatically be updated also. These name values will then be seen as start variables within the workflow for use later. We also wanna make sure that all of this information is required as it will be necessary later in our process. Now, if we wanted to provide the user with a little bit more assistance, we can also provide placeholder text in each one of these fields so that the end user knows exactly how we want the data formatted. Let's go ahead and add that now. Next, for our agreement information, we actually want to add a start date or a date time control, and then we'll add a choice control that will specify what our relationship type is going to be. And finally, we actually want to add one more text short control that will be the open text field if the relation type is set to other. Let's go ahead and we'll update our control names. In our desired agreement start date, we will go ahead and restrict past dates as agreements should only start either today or in the future. And then we'll go ahead and we'll update our choice control so that it's not radio buttons, but instead is a drop down list with the please select option enabled. Now with our final field of relationship type other, we only want this to show when relationship type is set to other. So how do we do this? Well, to hide or show fields on Nintex forms, we will use rules. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can configure a rule to hide or show the relationship type other field on our form. Within the rules tab, we'll go ahead and select add new next to form rules. And then we'll give this rule a name of show relationship type other. And rules within Nintex forms are really designed as a if and then a then outcome. So in this case, we'll say if relationship type is equal to other, then 
we want our relationship type other to be visible and required. Else, we want our relationship type other to not be visible and not be required. With the rule complete, now when we go and preview the form, this time when we select the relationship type of other, the field appears, and when we change it back to something else, the field disappears. And with that, we've now completed the design of our request form. So let's go ahead and we'll apply changes and start working on building our workflow. The first action that we're going to add to our workflow is our generate document action. This will be used to take the information provided in the start form and generate our NDA document. You can find it in the template description within the gallery template. In this particular example, we're going to use our box connector, and I already have a connection established. However, if you'd like to add a new one, you can do so from within the workflow designer. We'll then go ahead and populate the path to where our template is held. And then we'll configure the output file name and where we want that file to be stored once it has been generated. The final step of configuring the generate document action will be storing the paths where this document has been held. Within the store path section, we'll go ahead and create a new collection variable that will store all of the URLs. This has to be a collection because there can be multiple files or multiple outputs that are stored. Because of this, the next action that we'll use in our workflow is a get item from collection action, which will then extract out the URL that we are looking for for our single document. And if you're wondering why we selected an index of zero instead of an index of one, it is because collections start with a counter of zero. And so the first item in the collection actually has an index of zero instead of one. Now that we've generated our document with the information collected from our start form, we actually want to send this out for signature using Nintex Sign powered by Adobe Sign. To do this, we'll use our get signature action. We'll then go ahead and configure our get signature action with the information that was collected in our start form. We'll give them the recipient role of signer and the recipient identity authentication of email. We'll give it the agreement name of company name space MNDA. Then let's go ahead and add a message. And in this case, I'm just going to say, hi, first name, please sign the attached document, a copy of which will be kept on file for you. Finally, we need to actually grab our document. In this case, because it was actually stored within a box file, we're gonna go ahead and select other connector and then we'll go ahead and provide the path that we got from our collection. And finally, as an output, we'll go ahead and grab our agreement ID. With the get signature action configured, we now need to configure the outcomes based on what the user ends up doing. In this case, we'll go ahead and configure a send an email action for our expired, completed, and aborted outcomes. And then we'll do a store signed document within the completed branch. With our expired and aborted emails configured, we'll go ahead and store the signed document using our store signed documents action from Nintex Sign. In here, we'll go ahead and select our connection We'll pass it the agreement ID, and then we are going to store this document back into box. And this time, we actually have a specific path where we'll store our signed documents. We again want to get our file paths, and so we will reuse the same variable that we used earlier. We can then copy the get file path that we used earlier as the reference will be the same, even though the data held inside the variables will be different. We'll then go ahead and use the get a file action that is connected to box so that we can get that signed document and store it into a workflow variable. And then finally, we can actually send our completed email with that signed document as an attachment. Lastly, let's go ahead and we'll update these send an email titles so they are a little bit more logical. 
And with that, we will have completed our MNDA workflow using Nintix Workflow Cloud. We hope this walkthrough has been helpful in your workflow development process, and we can't wait to see what you build next.